Good morning class, Professor Pronte here with another video. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to calculate consumer surplus and producer surplus from a graph. First things first, we wanna make sure what is consumer surplus. Remember in our previous video, consumer surplus takes place when a buyer is able to get something, when they acquire a good at a price that's lower than the most they'd be willing to pay, right? You value something really high, you would be pay, willing to pay a lot, but you pay something less than that, that difference between what you would pay and what you have to pay is called consumer surplus. There's a similar idea for sellers, right? When sellers sell something, they're able to receive the price that they actually sell the good for. Uh, but a lot of times the, um, the lowest that they would be willing to take is something underneath that, something lower than that. And that difference for a seller is called producer surplus. Uh, again, see the previous video for more explanation on that. But if we're good on those ideas conceptually, let's look ahead here to the graph and see how we can identify then the consumer surplus and producer surplus for a, an overall market. Okay, take a look behind me here. I have represented a market for some hypothetical good. I'm saying avocados because I love avocados. I'm saying here that the market price for avocados is gonna be two bucks. So that's gonna be the price that buyers pay. That'll be important for us. And it's also the price that sellers receive when they sell one. Avocados are going for a price of two bucks. The equilibrium quantity, I hope you guys can see this over here, is six. Okay, and so those are gonna be important variables for our calculations here in a moment. So to figure out then the overall consumer surplus for this market, what we wanna do is just look at buyer behavior here in sort of a discrete sense, right? One by one, looking at each and every unit that's bought and sold and trying to identify the consumer surplus for that unit. In other words, the consumer surplus for the first avocado, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, all the way up to the sixth one. All right. <clears throat> so looking at our graph then, the price that buyers have to pay, <coughs> excuse me, the price that buyers have to pay is the two bucks. However, there's another curve here that shows us the highest price that a consumer is willing to pay for some good. You guessed it, it's the demand curve, right? That's the, the definition of the demand curve, right? It links up for a given quantity. It shows us the maximum willingness to pay for that unit. For the first avocado, if you read up to the height of the demand curve, way up here, directly above that one, what you're gonna see is the highest price that some consumer out there is willing to pay for the first avocado. So for the very first one, excuse me, I'm gonna step over to the other side here. For avocado one, the amount of consumer surplus that we're gonna get is this vertical distance between our demand curve all the way down to the price line. Right? So this vertical line that I've got right there, that would represent our consumer surplus for the first avocado. What about for the second one? Well, the second one, there's a consumer out there willing to pay a price that's not quite as high as we saw for the first one, but it's still much higher than the two bucks. So you're gonna get consumer surplus of that height for the second avocado. And so the pattern then is going to follow all the way out here, to the third, the fourth, the fifth, all the way until we get to the sixth avocado, where there's no consumer surplus for that sixth one. Somebody pays two bucks, the buyer's willing to pay two bucks. Okay, so what we wanna do then in trying to find the consumer surplus for the overall market is just to sum together, to aggregate all of that consumer surplus for each of the units that are bought and sold, right? And so I'm hoping that you guys are figuring this out. The overall consumer surplus in this market is gonna be represented by this triangle that we've got up here, this top triangle that goes from the demand curve, the spot where the demand curve intersects our vertical axis, down to the price, all the way out to our equilibrium, or supply and demand cross. So this 
triangle here represents our consumer surplus. Just a moment, I've got another diagram. I'll uh, show this a little bit more clearly. <clears throat> okay, what about then the sellers of the good? Well, they get producer surplus like we were talking about before. It's the difference between the price that they get and the lowest that they're willing to take. Now the appropriate things to look at are the price, again, that two bucks, and the supply curve, which shows us the lowest price the seller is willing to sell the good for. And so the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth avocados are generating producer surplus represented by this little triangle down in here. Okay. So let me come back over. I've got another diagram to show you. This one here can be used to more clearly see the consumer and producer surplus graphically. That's one thing you guys should be able to do. Take a graph and figure out, okay, where's the consumer surplus? Where's the producer surplus? Looking back at our board above, it's this top triangle here that's the consumer surplus. Let's color that in. That triangle right there represents the consumer surplus, abbreviated as CS for consumer surplus, showing us the accumulated uh, difference between what a uh, buyer's willing to pay and what they have to pay. Okay. The producer surplus. It's going to be that bottom triangle down there, isn't it? Look back over there. We've got it represented on the bigger graph with little hash marks. Let's do that here as well. And so that bottom triangle that you've got right here, this shows us the producer surplus, P. Yes. Okay, so in some cases, then you're going to be asked to find the area on a graph representing consumer and producer surplus. And this is the picture that you want, right? Keep in mind, the definition here is really critical, right? If you're clear that what well, consumer surplus represents the difference between what people are willing to pay, that's the demand curve. What they have to pay, that's the price line for all units then you can sort of reason your way to what area represents consumer and producer surplus, respectively. Okay. Another way, then, that these sort of questions are uh, represented is you'll be asked to put a number on it, right? Rather than saying the consumer surplus is this area, what's the dollar value associated with consumer surplus, right? And so the trick there, the method that you're going to use is to simply find the area first, uh, find, find the area on the graph that represents consumer surplus, and then calc the, calculate the area of that shape. So we're going to use a little geometry right now. Think way back when, your geometry class, we found it on the graph. We just need now to find the area that we've shaded in for consumer surplus. So I've got here another graph, right, that's using the same numbers that we had before, where I've just taken here this top consumer surplus triangle that we're looking for and just sort of blown that up. So we're just looking at this part of the graph. We're ignoring all the other stuff to try to make this as clear as we can. I hope this is clear. All right, so if we're going to find the area of this, what we need to do is figure out the dimensions, right? So look to how high it is, uh, the vertical dimension here, well, that point was at a nine, this point was at a two, that difference between the two is that height of seven that I've used for my triangle here. How far is this dimension here? Well, it started at zero and extended all the way over to six. All right, and so then the final step is to recognize that when you're calculating the area of a triangle, it's one half multiplied by the dimensions that you see that the base and the height. So one half times the seven times the six 
gives us $21 of consumer surplus. That's our final answer. That's what we want. All right, we want to do the same thing for producers. So the practice is really similar, right? You want to find the numbers here around the edges of this triangle and then use uh, the formula for the area of a triangle to figure out how much producer surplus we see. There we go. We've got another board showing this here. So again, all I've done on this little board here is to kind of blow up the producer surplus area from the graph behind me. All right, so the formula that we want is the area of a triangle, just like before. That's not an econ thing, it's a, a math thing. Uh, producer surplus is gonna be one half times the base times the height. The challenge for us is to find what's the base and the height of this triangle, All right? So from here to here, it went from one up to two. So that dimension here is gonna be one. I've kind of erased it. All right, that's a one. And then how far across is the triangle? Well, it goes from zero to six. So there we go, we need a one and a six. We plug them in right here. One half times the one times the six gives us producer surplus of $3. That's our final answer. Okay. Most commonly you'll be asked to find consumer and producer surplus just like we did. Um, one extension that you might wanna be able to do as well is to find the total surplus in a market, right? And all, that's a pretty straightforward one if you've got this stuff already. To find the total surplus, you're just gonna to sum together the consumer and the producer surplus. Total surplus equals consumer plus producer surplus. So we found then that the consumers had $21 of surplus. Producer surplus was three. We add those two together, 21 plus the three would give us $24 of total surplus in a problem like this. All right, guys, that's all for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.